I'm Mikar Kuisma, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about DevOps search journey, what the DNA has been doing. And um, I'm a little bit going to pain point about things, uh, challenges what DNA has faced during the past two or three years. And um, what kind of solution we were, we were actually doing and how we are doing nowadays. So what kind of benefits we are actually getting from uh, doing things a little bit more agile and with DevOps. So I'm Mikael Kuisma. I'm a change and release manager at DNA. I work in the DevOps and IT production team. And uh, I'm basically the sole responsible in DNA whole organization that uh, we get uh, this kind of DevOps capabilities into the use. And um, I've been in telecom industry about 15 years and uh, for the past eight or so years been doing agile development and being a product owner for various different kind of systems and uh, for the past uh, two and a half years i've been uh, owner of ci cd tools and uh, also a change agent for this uh, devops transformation that is uh, taking place in dna and um, when we are talking about devops you can see in the internet there's a lot of this kind of what is devops and how does it work and can you buy it or something but uh, the truth is that uh, devops isn't this kind of easy way to understand uh, what is meant and uh, i usually recommend that every organization actually do this kind of uh, what do you think what is devops for you guys and in dna we are started to this uh, I was giving suggestion and after a couple of years we just came into this kind of model that uh, DevOps in DNA it's about uh, agility culture, and uh, how to be lean when you are doing things and also management usually likes a lot to have this kind of tooling things uh, within the DevOps thing so basically it's about those four things uh, combined and in DNA, this is a mandatory slide, you can read it. Uh, we are actually very good uh, doing in the past couple of years. Uh, we are telecom, we are having cable TVs and so on. And yeah, our core values are to be agile, innovative and streamlined. And that is uh, basically uh, also a DevOps thing because it's a strategy for us to go into DevOps. And uh, also good thing to mention that uh, during this year we was actually managing to get the great place to work, the first place in that. That means that uh, in DNA the Personnel has been voting that the DNA is the best place to go and start your working day every morning. But let's go into things. So what is uh, DNA was having? What kind of challenges it had had in the past? And uh, we were doing everything like waterfall, and it didn't work. The projects were late all the time. There was lots of things to do. The, how to manage work, uh, who is doing what, and so on. And everything was just expensive, late deliveries, <coughs> and problems after problems. <coughs> so, what we started to do? We started to think uh, maybe we should actually go in the Agile movement and start doing uh, Scrum and these kind of things. First, it was kind of experiments. and. Well, some of those uh, were working quite good and some of the experiments were just terrible. It didn't work. And if you want to move yourself, it actually means that you need to have a lot of time to do it. And if you don't have support from management and from the people and the whole organization to do differently, you will fail every time. I know it. I've seen it quite many times over the past years. And how can you go forward from this kind of uh, place that you have deployments, you fail it, you are having lots of partners, all the teams are just 
this kind of silos. You cannot actually connect anybody or get things done. You need to do uh, this kind of a change ticket into some ticket system. And who is handling the ticket doesn't know where the ticket comes and who is handling it next. I think some of you actually have seen this kind of things. This, this is not uncommon in the companies that I've seen overall. And most of all, I hate deployments. I'm a release manager in DNA, and um, I, this one of my responsibilities is to make sure that we have deployments on time and so on. But why do you do deployments during the night time? Next day, nobody's doing any work. You're losing value. You're losing the time that you could actually do some actual development or operations. So every time when we had a likely downtime, Around two days, we were missing working days for the people who were part of that. And uh, if there, some people weren't part of this uh, deployment, they were actually just waiting that those people come back. So every time, every month, two days, nothing happens. So how to get started? Um, I had a theory when I started to do this kind of DevOps things in DNA and uh, my first uh, ideas were totally wrong. And uh, after a year, I got a little bit smarter how to do things. And uh, I understood you need to have building block blocks. If you don't have uh, this kind of uh, where to put and uh, things and uh, have the basic things uh, working, you cannot actually have DevOps or even you cannot even go and it agile. So first, first step uh, actually takes some time. I was doing this, uh, I think maybe eight years ago, that uh, we need to have change management. It is kind of for development. I don't mean this kind of, uh, if you have problems in the production or this kind of error management, I mean change management that you are doing new things, you need to actually have some project management also and uh, coordinate who is doing what, when and why. And in DNA we started to use Jira and uh, with Jira it was uh, quite painful because uh, most of the teams actually, why? We have Excel, we have emails. I can go and ask somebody, can you do this? Or leave a post-it note in the laptop. Very good sense management. So make it visible, have tickets and uh, make this kind of a workflow that you actually understand what you are doing and when and why. And that means that you need to have your development process drawn out and enforce it. Everybody mm -hmm. needs to have a process that how they are working. It doesn't need to be the same for the each team, but you, in overall, you need to have some kind of framework that there is similarities that if you want to, for example, report how the teams are doing, is somebody on time also. If you don't have framework and everybody have different kind of statuses, different kind of way of working, you, can, you cannot have reporting. You don't have any visibility. And for management, uh, that is uh, kind of painful because, uh, okay, they have, that team is doing well and that is, they have everything in progress. But what does in progress mean? And that is the thing. You need to have framework. Okay, you have change management, you have development process. What next? You go agile. It doesn't matter what methodology you start to use. Just pick something, try it out. It doesn't work. Okay, take a next one. Take a small this kind of book that uh, is it working or not. And one team actually can work with it, other team cannot. So you actually need to have several tries before you actually find something. And in DNA, we were experimenting quite a lot um, during the days with uh, this kind of Kanban methods and uh, doing Scrum, uh, something between those Scrum and so on. And every second team was telling it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what to do? You just continue, continue, refine your work. What is the pain points? Correct those, and you have agile mindset at some point. 
it, do, it doesn't need to be exactly what, the, for example, what is Chrome, but something very close. And if you have a common rule book, it's very easy to give everybody, oh, we are working like this. Let's do it same with other teams. And over time, it takes uh, place and the teams actually start to do same thing in the same way. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes years. Uh, this uh, going into Scrum, uh, it took maybe two years that uh, we actually had our first actual working Scrum teams. But then we had a new problems. We had lots of partners, about uh, 40 or so, and DNA doesn't actually do with their own uh, development. We are buying this uh, from partners that they are doing the code, and uh, some of the partners are giving us uh, as a service. But oh my gosh, I have partner one, I have partner two. They are not discussing, even they are doing the same thing that they have this kind of dependency between them. So one is doing something and it breaks the second one. And Agile doesn't actually give any tools how to do it. So how to go forward? We need to step two. You put the Agile framework that in scale. And in DNA case, we actually started to use this uh, SAID, Scaled Agile framework. Uh, it also requires that uh, in uh, safe there is also this kind of dimension about devops and you need to have devops to do agile framework it's kind of strange but the good thing about this is that in the framework you have a guide book you can do it you when you have this kind of two teams are daily i want to do it that way i want to do it that way and okay let's see what the framework says it's our judge. It says, let's do it that way. And if it doesn't work, we actually, sprint after sprint, we actually change a little bit how we are doing until it works with us. And it's about culture in the end. You can have lots of tools, all kind of frameworks and rules and this kind of things, but it doesn't actually change anything until the people themselves feel that they want to change. You need to have uh, lots of this kind of uh, salespersons within the organization that is telling that, okay, hey, go on, go on, let's try it, let's try it. And at some point, people actually, they get, oh, why not? Let's try it out. And when you have a few teams that is very successful, they are doing things, they are actually getting things done. The other teams, why they are doing so good results? We want to do it also. And after that, it's like a wildfire. They want to go and do and do. And we have a lot of prob uh, problems when we have lots of this kind of um, different kind of partners that is not connecting each other. So how to improve that? You actually establish this kind of framework also for com communications. And the communications is really important. If, if the teams and the developers doesn't communicate with each other, nothing happens. You're always breaking down something. And uh, when we started to do this kind of uh, agile and uh, having this uh, communications a little bit more in scale, we, our downtimes and this kind of things actually went down a lot. During the last year, in the end of the year, I was getting our internal uh, people as in management asking what is happening in DNA? We don't haven't had any critical failures in the past few years. Why? They didn't understand what is happening. Why we are not doing anything to disrupt the business. And they had very lots of interviews and going through the teams and trying to find out why, why, and everybody was telling, we are doing it agile. We are starting to do DevOps things, but they didn't understand what it means. So the main reason for that was that the top management wasn't actually involved directly with the Agile movement or in DevOps. And that is important. Have everybody trained for DevOps and Agile. 
if you don't train, you are speaking different kind of language. You don't know what everybody's talking about, and they are giving misinformation and uh, understanding wrong all the time what everybody else is doing. So train everybody. That means also the CEO needs to go into training and, for example, do a agile certificate about uh, being Scrum Master, for example, because that means that he starts to get a little bit uh, understanding why we are doing and what kind of action is actually needed to do this. So we have agile framework, the basics. We have to starting to change the culture, but uh, it is not enough. You need to have automation. And automation is actually the thing that actually gives more and more speed how to do things. You can be quite agile. I, I know, for example, one of my partners is uh, they was uh, doing deployment every two months, once a month if there was a hurry, and they was telling it's not possible to do any faster. That's the maximum speed. And after a while, I was discussing why don't we do CI start have some test automation. No, 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 these products, these are this kind of exceptions. You cannot do anything against this. And what happens when we were starting to talk that, okay, maybe we should actually start to think about changing this uh, system to do something else that actually can deliver a little bit more speed. And three months later, they were doing deployments twice a week. And that was mostly about the, the mindset. They changed how they are thinking and started to do a little bit agile. They were starting to do one week sprints and uh, planning all the time what they are doing. And suddenly they actually have very good uh, lead time. But it started with the mindset. But uh, if you want to have more speed than uh, twice or once a week, you need to have automation. And the most important automation that you can start with is test automation. Because uh, testing takes a lot of time. And <laughs> if not having test automation, well, it's really difficult. So what's needed? Um, about two years ago, I had one big partner of ours. They had a deployment every two months. And every deployment was breaking something. If I remember correctly, about uh, every second deployment was kind of, okay, our production is broken somewhat, let's fix it. And after that, about 24 hours it took and uh, we had the fixes. And now again, what orders is going through and so on. But I was telling them all the time, no, few months, too long time. We don't realize any value for the customers. We need to deliver a little bit fast. Change your cycle to two weeks. And no, 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 it's not possible. We can do it maybe one month. But the PO bought the idea that, okay, let's do two weeks. And they started to do this kind of two weeks uh, scrum sprints. And voila, after three months, they were doing eight times faster development than they was doing previously. The actual development items, what they are, were doing, they was actually splitting those into small pieces. They was kill, giving this uh, kind of a better idea what they are doing. They was putting their descriptions uh, of the change uh, more formalized way, and it was giving the acceptance credit criteria and these kind of things, so they could actually start testing when they are doing the development. And same time, when they started to do it, oh, look at that, we have a user story. And, well, this user story, we can actually write it down as a test case, or several test cases. So they started to automate their test cases, because uh, if you are doing automated testing and uh, manual testing. Have you guys any idea how much more effort is doing automated testing to generate it, to build this kind of a new test case for automation? Any ideas? Is it more or less work than manual testing? 
industry more than when it feels it. Yeah. Well, I was following this up uh, for the past half a year, and uh, there was several, several teams, and the time that they were spending for manual testing is quite exact the time, but they need to set up the automated testing for that some, same cases. So why to do manual testing when you can, with the same effort, you actually can do the automated testing. And after that, you can run it every <coughs> week or every night, every <coughs> deployment or regressions and so on. It, that's why it's a lot of, it makes sense because uh, you don't need to test those cases anymore later on. Um, and also, when you have those automated, you don't have that much delays. But the big problem with this is that uh, usually the people who is uh, on business side or product owners and so on, they don't see exactly the value that uh, if you automate testing, they are, oh, but this is going to slow down us. Because if we do automation, it's out of... Uh, the effort that we are doing for development. No, it's not that. You need to have, from the start, people doing the auto test automation. And in ideal <coughs> way, you should have about, uh, either that way that the developer does him or herself uh, the test cases, or you have a pair working that there is a developer and tester and they do it together. But uh, if you have 10 developers and one pay people doing testing, you cannot automate anything. It doesn't work. So that is uh, one of the pain points that I notice in DNA side is that uh, you don't get enough resources to automate test automation because uh, people are not seeing what kind of value it delivers. So it's quite expensive to have somebody to build. And if you have legacy systems or you have started your project, let's say half a year ago, to catch up is huge. It takes time. And you need to have lots of money and people to do it. It's not exactly that cheap, but when you have it set it up, it's a kind of return of invest. It starts to pay back. Uh, one of our oldest partners who is uh, doing test automation, they started to do it 2011. And nowadays they have uh, the test set, the total test cases are maybe 14 to 15,000 test cases. So during the eight years, they was able to have a very comprehensive testing suite. And now they are testing almost everything by automation. There's very little about this uh, manual testing in that. So I recommend to spend some time because uh, we had this kind of uh, good thing about that. Um, we have this uh, very large test cases. The, doing the development and having the testing, it, testing can be done actually in a couple of days. So most of the time it's about political. Oh. Now my mouse is something doing by itself. So it's political decision that uh, you want to have some kind of freeze time or something waiting time that if something is found. But uh, if you want to go on lead process, you can have development and deployment in the next day. And the most important thing is that it never ends. When you start to do the, this test automation, you need to keep it up you need to support it, you need to build more and more. Put this kind of KPI metrics that uh, if your test automation is stagnant or is starting to fall down, you are having less and less test automation test cases, it means that you have something really bad gone wrong. So take this KPI that uh, it always, with every sprint, it has to be go up all the time. Never stay same or go down because you're always doing something. And that is good indication that uh, you are doing something actually for the management. They see that the test cases are in improving, the count is growing up, you have things. Okay, about security. Uh, 
Let the puppet uh, think there was actually a little bit same thing. I'm quite like-minded in that. Integrate your security testing with the CI. It's a kind of must to have, because if you have automation and you have automated testing, you actually can actually put the policies, the rules, and there's a lot of tools, uh, freeware and uh, also paid <coughs> this kind of uh, that can actually go through the automation, give that, is there any libraries that is uh, not good to use, is there licensing problems, and uh, also there is, I've noticed that during the last year there started to be this kind of uh, AI solutions also that actually go and uh, mine your development environments that uh, do you have some kind of this kind of uh, usage that is not common usually and then put it in the production also. So the, your security testing should be always with the development environments, your pre-prod staging environments in the production. You should have the same CI pipeline for implementing security things also. So if you have a JSON policy, add it. Uh, in DNA case, uh, we have just started to do our security improvements. The problem is that uh, we have in our safe trains, we have about 38 teams at the moment, and there is only one person doing the security things. So, as you guess, it's a little bit too much for one guy. And he's, uh, most of the time, he's just doing the audits uh, in the late uh, process, just before something is going into production or is already in the production and then they start to do a security audits and these kind of things and it's not a good way. Uh, typical security audit takes uh, months very easily because they are going very through all the things and it's very expensive. With the same money you can actually buy lots of uh, this kind of uh, tools that make some, some of the testing and uh, enforce the policies in the early stages of a development, for example, in the de development environments. And it also, those same costs actually can be actually managed to get up more people doing security. So why to do that in the late stages? There's no point for that. It's uh, too expensive. And uh, yeah. Bye. Okay. So, when you are planning to have security involved in your development process, do it in early stage. It's an architectural thing, it's a mind state. If people and team are not <coughs> behind the security, you won't get anything done. That's a fact. So, commitment is uh, needed. And if you have a security officer or so on, the important thing is that they actually train the teams to do way, uh, development in a more secure way. That is the quick win for you guys. Okay, what benefits did the DNA get? Okay, I was uh, putting a few examples here. In culture team, we have happy people. Uh, we have been one well, last year, we were second best place to work in Finland. Today, this year, we are best place, place, place to work. So it means that, that people have meaning in their work. And uh, it actually works for the whole organization because it's not exactly in the DevOps to have a best place to work, but uh, it has the same goal. We are trying to do it, that uh, everybody is happy. And happy with developer, happy tester is uh, really fast <laughs> doing their work. So we get the uh, more out of it doing that way. And the mindset, it's okay to fail. If you fail, learn it, don't repeat the mistake and share your problem. The sharing is uh, really difficult because uh, for the teams, share with everybody, oh, that's <laughs> really difficult. But you need to have some kind of spokesman, person that is actually very good with this and make sure that they talk about it, keep it up, and that other teams, what they are doing. So share the knowledge. And in CI, CD point of view, 
I was cal calculating yesterday what kind of increase in deployment de frequency we have. And uh, if I compare it about six years, five, six years ago, we are nowadays we are 12 to 37 times faster in average, depending what team we are looking at. The best teams are doing 900 times faster development than the slowest team. So in the puppet report, you can see 440 times faster, but uh, we have some teams that is doing 900 times. Uh, last week, for example, in Monday, that one team was doing 25 deployments during the day in office hours, and nobody noticed anything. That's a very good uh, thing if somebody managed to get. And we have the difference between teams are big. Some are very slow, some are very fast. So concentrate with the teams that is open for this kind of changes for Agile and don't try to force it. It doesn't work. And lead time actually gets better when you have more speed, smaller packages. You have time to develop. You deliver value to business more evenly. You do right things and your time to market is actually better. So wrap up. Change doesn't happen in one night. It takes years. When uh, my CEO was telling me that, uh, Mikael, please do the DevOps thing. We want to do DevOps. And the first thing I was telling, okay, how fast? Uh, next year? No, five to seven. It doesn't happen that fast. So we have been doing it uh, about three and a half, uh, two and a half, three years at the moment. And uh, we're almost in the midway. So maybe one, three years more, and we are actually having most of our teams doing development in really high speed every day without downtimes. And remember, automate testing, do a shift left in security and testing as early as possible. It's cheaper that way, you get better results and better quality. And when you have problems, don't be afraid of those. Do pro uh, problems, fail as often as possible and fix this, that thing and do it again. A little bit differently so it works next time. You actually get uh, many good uh, opportunities about that. You might, for example, find new business ideas and so on, new products. And uh, prepare, a pr prepare a plan with all of the teams you might have this kind of high level plan for the whole organization, but it's kind of, you know, in the clouds. And the team is, uh, what is the concrete thing about this? What we are supposed to do? Okay, it, team actually needs to take ownership of the change. Then it starts to work. And uh, you go and help them a little bit. Uh, okay, how about these kind of things? Spar, what kind of things they need to do? And after a while, they get this, uh, idea that okay we do it this way and that way and make this kind of action plan of what kind of things they want to do for example in the next half a year or a year don't do a plan bigger than that because uh, it changes after three months totally <laughs> so if you want to change your architecture or so on that might be take place more than six months and don't focus on tools Cultural and mindset is actually the most important thing. If you focus on tools, you actually lose your way and you don't get anything done. And uh, it's very easy to <laughs> get confused with the tools. It does, from, lots of companies are promising lots of things, but uh, in the end, somebody needs to use those tools and how you are using it actually matters. Okay, last minute questions. What's that shift left thing? Uh, shift left is actually that uh, if you are doing testing, for example, just before production <coughs> go live, you actually start to do it in earlier stages. That most of the testing should be done, for example, in dev development environment. Uh, I have one team that is uh, having uh, 2000, over 2,000 unit tests, 2,150 API test and all of those are done before they start to do development. Oh, so, so it's like in the pipeline. Yeah, think, earlier. yeah, yeah. 
So basically means that uh, if you're doing something here, don't do security here, do it here. Okay. As uh, early as possible. That is shift left. And the more you do shift left in testing or anything else, the more faster your trade gets. Well, were you actually able to convince uh, your partners uh, they deliver the dependencies to work in the Azure manner as yeah. well? Because I, I can certainly imagine that it's going to be like a, stop, a blocker for your being faster and yeah. faster with any more dependencies they have yeah. to wait like in the waterfall. Or yeah, uh, we was using this uh, safe uh, scaled Azure framework as a good line for this, and uh, it uh, requires to have uh, every fifth sprint this kind of uh, common planning for that all the teams gather around and check what kind of dependencies, what kind of plans they have for the next month or two, and uh, they discuss it through the, how to do it and what. So the inter inter interaction actually is the main thing, but uh, not all companies and partners are actually open for this, and uh, that is the kind of case that uh, you should actually start to think, is this the right partner for you? If they don't actually give any leeways or start to do a little bit agile, I usually say that go oh, change. Yeah, well, that was yeah. why I thought yeah. that you could, could yeah. basically, as, as, yeah. uh, as, as the, the, the consumer, you could basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, one, more, one more question there. I mean, okay. I'm a big fan of the scale agile framework as well. But I'd like to have a question on test automation, if you will. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you're creating a whole lot of test automation cases, and I guess you are bringing them along on the different stages as the, as the code evolves from uh, well, development yeah. test to QA to mm -hmm. production. Are you, yeah. are you running the same test on production as well as that uh, built on the development phase? Well, in the development, you don't actually have all the integrations. Uh, in the first cases, yeah. you have, let's say, 10 to 16 layers of systems. In the worst cases, and um, it's very too hard to have all the integrations in place in the development. So you need to have lots of mocks and these kind of things for the testing. Uh, the idea is that you just get eighty percent of the worst bugs <coughs> before you go forward with the development. Yeah, but some of the yeah. tests are run on the production as well. Because, uh, uh, in production, you should never actually do any actual testing, only regression that you just check is there any difference with, for example, with the staging and the production. But uh, otherwise, it should always be that before <coughs> that you have caught about everything. It's not a reality most of the cases, but that is the mindset you need to have that you don't take any problems into production. Okay, thank you for the questions. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Thank you. <laughs>